Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're reading from Shima Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, Verses 6 and 7. Passing away of Vishwade. Parvata Narada Tamya Bhagavan Bhadarayana Vihadasho Paratvaja Sashishya Renaka Sutta Vashishya Renaka Sutta Vashishya Indra Sita Samada Sitaha Sita Gautama Tisha Kashiko Tasitarshanaha Ladies. Parvataha Parvat Muni Naradaha Narmuni Tomyaha Tomya Bhagavan Incarnation of God then Badarayanha Vyasadev Vihadashaha Vihadashva Paradvajaha Paradvaj Sashishaha, along with disciples, Venukastaha, Parsharam, Vashishtaha, Vashishta, Indrapamadaha, Indrapamada, Tvitaha, Tvita, Vritsamadha, Vritsamada, Asitaha, Asita. Bakshivan, Bakshivan, Gautamaha, Gautama, Achihi, Achri, Cha, and Kaushikaha, Kaushika, Hatha, as well as Siddharshanaha, Siddharshan. Translation All the sages like Parva, Uni, Narada, 
Dhamya, Vyas, incarnation of God, Vihadashva, Bhardraj and Parashuram and disciples, Vishishta, Intrapamada, Chitta, Gritsamada, Asita, Kakshivam, Gautama, Achi, Kashika and Sudushan were present. Mukam Karati Vacharam Pangama Kate Gitin Yaki Pantaham Bande Siguru Tinatarna Omagana Timarandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chapshur Miritam Yana Tasamai Shi Kuravina Purport Parvat Muni is considered to be one of the oldest sages. He is almost always a constant companion of Narada Muni. They are also spacemen, competent to travel in the air without the help of any material vehicle. So we had spacemen, we have spacemen, uh, the scientists should, should learn about these spacemen. Uh, maybe it will help them to uh, uh, make better spaceships when they figure out how these, pe how these Narada and Parva travel without the spaceship. Um, so uh, yes, this, this was going on many thousands of years ago. We had spacemen, we had airplanes, we had everything. Um, it's not just a modern uh, achievement. Parvat Muni is also a Devarshi, or a great sage amongst the demigods like Narada. He was present along with Narada at the sacrificial ceremony of Maharaj Janami Jaya, son of Maharaj Pariksit. In this sacrifice, all the snakes of the world were to be killed. So um, we have information from 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Janmai Jaya, there it talks about the, the fire sacrifice, of, the snake sacrifice, uh, because um, Parikshit, the father of Janmai Jaya, was killed by Takshika, a snake. So his son wanted revenge. He wanted to kill Takshika immediately. So he started a um, snake sacrifice to destroy all the snakes of the world. Uh, so Takshika was a very special snake. He had protection from Indra. But um, as far as I remember in Mahabharata, uh, when they were performing the sacrifice, they were, calling, they were chanting the mantras to make Takshika fall in the fire. And Indra was also falling along with Takshika into the fire. So then um, what happened was Brihaspati came and he stopped Maharaj Jamajaya from performing the sacrifice. And he gave two reasons. He said one reason, you cannot kill Takshika because he's drunk the nectar of the demigods. So, um, yeah, we'd have to look that up in Mahabharata to find out uh, that story. Uh, maybe some of it spilled when um, it was the ocean of milk was being churned and the demons were fighting over it. And uh, anyway, and so, uh, yes, he, he got some of that nectar. And the second reason why um, Janami Jaya shouldn't kill Takshika is uh, a philosophical reason that all living entities must enjoy the fruits of their past activities. So, you see your father, he's just getting his karma, let him have it, you know. So, um, yeah, so, so John Jaya listened and he stopped the sacrifice. Uh, he was convinced by Rahaspati. So then, um, Parvat Muni. Like Narada Muni, Parvat Muni also used to visit the royal assembly in the heaven of King Indra. So interplanetary travel was going on here many, many years ago, and still going on with these sages, although they don't like to come down here anymore. Uh, except, uh, um, actually, Sri Prabhupada did say that in London, uh, he, to make a Vyasasan for Narada Muni and Brahma, because they are coming for darshan uh, for, of the deities. Uh, so they do come sometimes, and in Vrindavan they say, the demigods come for Sandhya Arti. The demigods are coming down. So, yeah, um, this is Kali Yuga. We don't see these things so much. Uh, as a Gandharva, sometimes he visited the royal assembly of Kuvera, one of the important demigods. So, the Gandharvas go to Kuvera, the Gandharvas go to Brahma's assembly. They also travel. Both Narada and Parvat were once in trouble with the daughter of Maharaj Shinjaya. Maharaj Shinjaya got the benediction of a son by Parvat Muni. So we won't tell that pastime because we like to see Narada Muni as, as he is in our discipline session. So now we, here's Narada Muni.
he's next, uh, Narada Muni, is inevitably associated with narrations of the Puranas. He is described in Bhagavatam in his previous life. He was a son of a maid servant, but by good association with pure devotees, he became enlightened in devotional service. And in the next life, he became a perfect man comparable with himself only. And so you can't compare Narada with anyone except himself. What can we say? I guess we can say that about Prabhupada. Can't compare anyone with Prabhupada except Prabhupada himself. Um, in the Mahabharata, his name is mentioned in many places. He is the principal Devarshi or chief sage among the demigods. He is the son and disciple of Brahmaji, and from him the disciplic succession in the line of Brahma has been spread. He initiated Prahlad Maharaj, Jupa Maharaj, and many celebrated devotees of the Lord. He initiated even Vyasadeva, the author of the Vedic literatures, and from Vyasadeva, Madhvacharya was initiated, and thus the Madhva Sampradaya, in which the Gaudi Sampradaya is also included, has spread all over the universe. So he's very dear to us because he's in our Sampradaya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu belonged to this Madhva Sampradaya. Therefore, Brahmaji, Narada, Vyas, down to Madhva, Chaitanya, and the Goswamis all belong to the same line of disciplic succession. Naraji has instructed many kings from time immemorial. In Bhagavatam, we can see he instructed Prahlad Maharaj while he was in the womb of his mother, and he instructed Vasudev, father of Krishna, as well as Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, he was instructing at, at the Rajasuya sacrifice um, because Maharaj Yudhisthira saw Shishupala personally. He saw him merge into the body of Krishna. So he asked why, how did this happen? He asked Narada, who was seated there. Uh, so that's when Narada, and the whole seventh canto is the narration of Maharaj, uh, Nar Narada Muni to Maharaj Yudhisthira. How did he uh, instruct you? Vasudev, obeisance to you, Vasudev said to him in 10th Canto, 84th chapter. Please hear me, O sages, kindly tell us how the reactions of one's work can be counteracted by further work. So Yudhisthira was worried about getting sinful reactions. Oh, Vasudev, sorry, Vasudev was worried, father of Krishna. He was really worried. And Narada said, oh, just see, it's not so amazing in his eagerness to know Vasudeva has asked us about his ultimate benefit, for he considers Krishna a mere boy. And so he's got, his, he's got Krishna as his, his son, and he's thinking, how can I atone for my sinful reactions, uh, for my sinful deeds? So Narada, he, he also instructed Chitraketu. And Narada, he had different techniques. He used different techniques for, uh, yes, Chitraketu. When his, he, they gave him a beautiful son, Angira and Narada went and they gave him a very beautiful son, Harsha Shoka. They said, and, but this son will give you happiness and distress both. And so Chichiketa thought, okay, no, maybe he'll be a bad boy or something. But no, <laughs> he died. And so then they, uh, Narada was explaining to Chichiketa that the relationship between father and son is not factual. It's a representation of the illusory energy, and you should not lament for temporary relationships. And so he also instructed Pat, uh, King Pachani Bahasha, uh, the constitutional position of the Lord and living entity, and he showed him, you know, you're doing all these sacrifices, but look what's going to happen to you after death. Uh, so um, Narada instructed Prahlad Maharaj, and uh, in the womb, and Prahlad was in the womb. And when Shingadev uh, asked Prahlad what benediction, Prahlad said, oh, just let me serve my spiritual master. How can I leave his service? And so Narada Muni is amazing, and, and we're very fortunate that he is in our disciple succession. And if we follow Srila Prabhupada, then we'll get the mercy of Narada Muni as well, and Brahma. So then, uh, next one, Dhomya. This we may not know so much about him, so I did look up a little bit here. Dhomya. 
a great sage, no, we're back up there, yeah, who practiced severe penances at Utko Chakatirta and was appointed royal priest of the Pandava kings. He acted as the priest in many religious functions of the Pandava Samskara, and also each of the Pandavas was attended by him at the betrothal of Jopati. He was present even during the exile of the Pandavas and used to advise them in circumstances when they were perplexed. He instructed them how to live incognito for one year and his instructions were strictly followed by the Pandavas during that time. So that, that was the last year of their exile, the 13th year, and they were living at the palace of Virat. His name is mentioned also in the general fur funeral ceremony was performed after the battle of Kurukshetra. So he was the family guru, so he probably did that. Uh, marriage of Jopati, he, he was there to marry um, the Pandavas with Jopati. In the Anam Shasana Parva of Mahabharata, he gave very elaborate religious instructions to Mahajudhisthira. He was actually the right type of priest, of a householder, for he could guide the Pandavas on the right path of religion. A priest is meant for guiding the householder progressively in the right path of ashram dharma, or occupational duty, of a particular caste. There is practically no difference between the family priest and the spiritual master. The sages, saints, and brahmanas were especially meant for such functions. Mm, that's interesting. Um, nowadays, um, I think in, in our movement, we, we do make a difference between the family priest and the spiritual master. If someone has been initiated out, has, has a family priest, I think in India, the, they get the brahman thread, the brahmins get a brahman thread at a young age, but then they may join ISKCON and then they get initiation again. And so they're... In that case, uh, now I, uh, it seems like uh, times have changed in, in that sense. So let's see about Domya. How did the Pandavas meet Domya? They went to some ashram of sages, and the sages told them where to find Domya's hermitage. So they went to Domya, fell at his feet, and Yudhisthira said, Oh, greatly learned one, we are Pandu sons traveling with our brother Kunti. On the Gandharva's advice, we seek your shelter. Please become our God and protector. We are your servants. So then Domia smiled. He made them sit down, and he brought his disciples brought wild fruits there, and they were in the forest and water. And uh, the Pandavas were what were so happy because they felt, oh, now we have our our spiritual master, our kingdom. We will get our kingdom back. Um, and Draupadi. We will win Jopati. This was before they lost the whole kingdom, but it was after the, their house was set on fire. The house was set on fire, they escaped, and they were uh, already incognito. Uh, they were traveling as Brahmins in this, at this point. Um, so then, and another thing happened when they were later on in exile in the forest in Mahabharata. It says that uh, Jayajatha, was traveling and he saw Jopati and he wanted to enjoy her so he sent her and the Pandavas were away at that time and she was at the at the hermitage at the hut where they were living and so then he sent messages to her and she refused and then he came and she knocked him down but then he did get her to sit on his, his chariot and Domya saw this and he started following the chariot and the message got to the Pandavas and they captured Jayajata and uh, insulted him. But later on, he was, he, um, re was responsible for killing uh, Abhimanyu, the son of Arjuna. So when Pariksit was born, Domya was there, he, uh, and he headed all the brahmanas to perform the birth ceremony, he and Kripa. So after Domya comes Bhadarayana, Vyasadeva. He is known as Krishna, Krishna Dvaipayana, Dvaipayana, Satyavati Sutta, Parasharya, Parasharatmaja, Bhadarayana, Vedvyas, etc. He was the son of Mahamuni Parasha in the womb of Satyavati prior to Herbert Choto with Mara Shantanu, father of the great general grandfather Bhishadev. So Prabhupada talks about um, the birth of Vyasadeva. 
um, that if a girl is beautiful, even if she's born of a low family, you can accept her. So she was the daughter of a fisherwoman, but she was very qualified and beautiful. So Parsha was attracted when she was taking the boat over. He was on a boat ride. And so they, he begot uh, yesterday in her womb. And she Prabhupada explained that even in, in even uh, 5,000 years ago, even before, it's not that uh, girls were not giving birth to children before their marriage. Uh, they were, and she's an example, Satyavati is an example. But the society was so elevated, it was not commonly done. Kunti is also another example. She had a child before her marriage to Pandi. So Vyasadeva, but he was so amazing. He, he's an incarnation of Krishna. And then Shantanu saw her, he wanted to marry her. And, uh, but her father objected, no, no, you, you know, you have your son, Vishvadev. If, if you marry my daughter, her son will not be king. And so Shantanu was upset, he went home, Vishvadev understood something was wrong. So he asked his father, and his father told him what happened. So Bhishma went to the, to the fisherman and asked for Satyavati to marry his father. And the man said, no, how can I give my daughter? You're here, You're, you'll be the king. And so Bhishma said, no, no, even if I'm present still, your, your um, daughter's son will be the king. He said, I won't accept the throne. And so then um, the father said, well, yeah, but maybe your son will take the throne. And the Vishwa said, no, I will be Brahmachari. <laughs> so then he took that Vra Brahmachari Vrat, Deva Vrata. He's called Deva Vrata. I'll never marry. So then his father gave him the benediction that unless you want to die, you will not die. You will never die. You will remain a very strong Brahmachari. And so um, Vishwa Dev remained Brahmachari. So let's see. He is a powerful incarnation of Narayan and he broadcasts the Vedic wisdom to the world. As such, Vyasadeva is offered respects before one chants the Vedic literature, especially Puranas. Shukadeva Goswami was his son, and Rishis like Vaishampayana were his disciples for different branches of the Vedas. He is the author of the great epic Mahabharata and the great transcendental literature Bhagavatam. The Brahma Sutras, Vedanta Sutras, or Badarayana Sutras were compiled by him. Among sages, he is the most respected author by dint of severe penances. When he wanted to record the great epic Mahabharata for the welfare of all people in the age of Kali, he was feeling the necessity of a powerful writer who could take up his dictation. By the order of Brahmaji, Sri Ganeshji took up the charge of noting down the dictation on the condition that Vyasadeva would not stop Dictation for a moment. Arigal. The Mahabharata was thus compiled by the joint endeavor of Vyasa and Ganesh. By the order of his mother Satyavati, who was later married to Maharshantanu, and by the request of Bhishmadev, the eldest son of Maharshantanu, by his first wife, the Gandhis, he begot three brilliant sons whose names are Vitarashta Pandu and Vitura. Mahabharata was compiled by Vyasadeva after the battle of Kurukshetra and after the death of all the heroes of Mahabharata. It was first spoken in the royal assembly of Maharaj Janmejaya, the son of Maharaj Pariksha. Okay. So he got, uh, yes, Vyasadeva, because Vishnu was a brahmachari, um, the, the um, Satyavati's son died, he was killed, he had three wives, he had two wives, two wives, sorry. Anga was, was later, uh, she had to, she went away. Only two wives, um, Ambika and Ambalika, he had two wives. So um, then Satyavati called Vyasadeva, her first child, and asked him to have children with the two wives. So the first one, because he was matted locks and really scary looking, as so she, she closed her eyes, and uh, he, and so therefore her son was born blind, and uh, the second wife, she, would, she went pale, and so Pandu was born pale, and then she, he was supposed to go back with Ambika, but Ambika sent her maidservant instead, and, and he got Vidura, she got Vidura. And so this is the history of, of Vyasadeva, 
And he started the crew, he kept the crew dynasty going. Actually, it was Vyasadev. Not only was he incarnation of Narayan, he was also the, the father of the crew dynasty. So Bharad, oh, let's see, who's next? Briha Dashva, an ancient sage who used to meet Maharaj Yudhisthira now and then. First of all, he met Maharaj Yudhisthira at Kanyavan. This sage narrated the history of Maharaj Anala. There is another Brihadashva who is the son of the Ikshvaku dynasty, Mahabharata and Parva, 294 and 5, four, five. Okay, yes, when the Pandavas were in the forest, all these sages used to come and visit them and give them good advice. And so the story of Nala, I'm not going to tell the story, but it's a really long story. And uh, the husband and wife were the kingdom. They were cheated out of the kingdom by gambling again. And, uh, of course, we should learn these lessons, don't gamble. Of course, we don't gamble. And so that's, that's good for us. We're lucky that we're not treacherous. And we don't have to gamble if we challenge. It's no gambling. That's part of our four good principles. So he lost, Maharaj Nala lost his kingdom by gambling. And he and his wife went to the forest. And then they lost everything. And, and finally, uh, they only had one cloth between them. And so he left her in the middle of the night. He, he, he cut off half the cloth and left. And then he was cursed. And he took a whole other ugly form. But then they were united again. And uh, he did learn how to play dice while he was out there. Um, so uh, they got their kingdom back. So that was, they were encouraging you to say, you will also get your kingdom back. Don't worry. And the sages were always out there encouraging the Pandavas. So Paradavaj, he is one of the seven great rishis and was present at the time of the birth ceremony of Arjuna. So Narada and... Uh, Let's see, Vashishta and Bhardavaj, they are, and yeah, they are part of, and Gautam, they are all the seven sages. Four of the seven are listed here in this um, verse. Okay. The powerful Rishi sometimes undertook severe penances on the shore of the Ganges, and his ashram is still celebrated at Prayag Dham. It has learned this Rishi while taking bath in the Ganges happened to meet Kritachi one of the beautiful society girls of heaven. And thus he discharged salmon, which was kept and preserved in an earthen pot, and from which Jonah was born. So Jonah Charya is the son of Bardraj Muni. Others say that Bardraj, father of Jonah, is a different person from Maharshi Bardraj. He was a great devotee of Brahma. Once he approached Jonah Charya and requested him to stop the battle of Kurukshetra. So, if he went to Jonah, it sounds like he was his father. It could be he, he was the father of Jonah. But Jonah was the son of a Rishi. And uh, let's see what we have here about him. Yes. He's one of the seven Rishis. Kashyap Achi. Oh, Achi is another one. Vishishta, Vishramita, Gautam, Jamadagi, and Bharadrash. Oh, now there's not one, sir. Kashyap Achi, Vishishta, Vishramita, Gautam, Jamadagi, and Bharadrash. So in the Rajasuya sacrifice, he was also one of the priests, and uh, he had selected by King Yudhisthira to perform his Rajasuya sacrifice. So Parshuram is next, is he? Yes. Or Renukasuta. He is the son of Maharshi Jamadagni and Shimati Renuka, thus he is known as Renuka Sutta. He is one of the powerful incarnations of God. And he killed the Kshatri community as a whole 21 times. With the blood of the Kshatriyas, he pleased the souls of his forefathers. He made some lakes. Is that Kshatriya? He made those lakes? I can't remember. He made some lakes, lakes of blood. And <laughs> that's how he appeased his forefathers. Um, Later on, he underwent severe penances at the Mahendra Parvat. After taking the whole earth from the Kshatriyas, he gave it in charity to Kashyap Muni. Parashram instructed Dhanurved, or signs of fighting, to Dronacharya because he happened to be a Brahmana. He was present during the coronation of Maharaj Yudhisthira, and he celebrated the function along with other great rishis. 
Parsham is so old that he met both Rama and Krishna at different times. So uh, that's pretty, pretty old. Uh, if, if, you, if Rama was in this Chatur Yuga, then it's a few million years. And if he was in a different Chatur Yuga, then it was quite a few more millions of years or billions. Who knows? Very, very old. He fought with Ram, but he accepted Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. So he was defeated by Ram. And uh, he also praised Arjuna when he saw him with Krishna. When Bhishma refused to marry Amba, who wanted him to become her husband, Amba met Parshuram, and by her request only, he asked Bhishma Dev to accept her as his wife. Bhishma refused to obey his order, although he was one of the spiritual masters of Bhishma Dev. Parshuram fought with Bhishma Dev, and Bhishma neglected his warning. Both of them fought very severely, and at last Parshuram was pleased with Bhishma and gave him the benediction of becoming the greatest fighter in the world. So this is also um, described in Mahabharata. Ninth Canto, Chapter 22. Uh, Prabhupada says in the purport that Satyavati, uh, her, his mother, was actually the daughter of Upari Charavasu by the womb of a fisher woman. So she was special. So there were three daughters of the king of Kashi, Ambika, Ambalika, and Amba. And Bhishma Dev kidnapped them uh, and to give to his brother, Vichy Traviria. So Amma thought Bhishma Dev would marry her. She, she, she actually didn't want to marry Bhishma Tiviri. She, had, she liked some other king, but that king rejected her because she was touched by Bhishma. So then she went back to Bhishma and said, now you have to marry me. And Bhishma said, I'm a brahmachari, sorry. And so then she complained to his guru. I, I, I think these things are still happening these days. Um, and I complained to his guru. The guru said, okay, we'll fight. Let's fight. And actually, Prabhupada said that uh, Parshuram was defeated by Bhishma. And so, therefore, Amba, she did austerities, and her next, and then she left her body, and she took birth as a man. Um, let's say, she continued. She continued. And then she wanted the death of Bhishma. So then um, Arjuna knew at, uh, that this Shikandini was a, a woman in the past life. So Arjuna wouldn't, uh, so what Arjuna did was put Sikandini in front of him when he was fighting with Bhishma. So Bhishma also knew who this Sikandini was and he, he didn't want to fight with uh, him because it was a her in the previous life. And so Arjuna could shoot Bhishma Dev that way. And that's where the well, arrows came from, Arjuna's arrows. Shikandini's arrows didn't bother Bhishma at all. Um, but Arjuna's arrows. They're the ones that, are, that Bhishma Dev is lying on. The bed of arrows are Arjuna's arrows. And so, um, yeah. The next one is Vishishta. The great celebrated sage among the Brahmanas, well known as Brahmarshi Vishishta Dev. He is a prominent figure in both the Brahman and Mahabharata periods. So he, like Parashuram, he's the same age. He's, he's very, very old. He celebrated the coronation ceremony of the personality of Godhead, Sri Ram. He was present also on the battlefield of Prukshetra. He could approach all the higher and lower planets, and his name is also connected with the history of Hiranyakashipu. I hmm, wonder what that connection is. There was a great tension between him and Vishvamitra, who wanted his Kamadhenu, wish-fulfilling power. Shishta Muni refused to spare his Kamadhenu, and for this, Vishwamitra killed his 100 sons. As a perfect Brahmana, he tolerated all the taunts of Vishwamitra. Once he tried to commit suicide on account of Vishwamitra's torture, but all his attempts were unsuccessful. He jumped from a hill, but the stones on which he fell became a stack of cotton, and thus he was saved. He jumped into the ocean, but the waves washed him ashore. He jumped into the river, but the river also washed him ashore. So as all his suicide attempts were unsuccessful. 
He is also one of the seven rishis and husband of Arundhati, the famous star. So the story of the cow, he, he hosted. One time Vishwamitra came with all his soldiers and he hosted him. And, he, and how did he host him? He fed him by the means of his kamati and the cow. From the cow came all the food and everything. And so Vishwamitra got envious, he wanted the cow. Uh, but um, finally Vishwamitra was defeated by the spiritual strength of Vishishta. So then Vishwamitra decided, oh, I want to become a Brahmin. And then he went severe austerities on the bank of the Koshika River. So another thing was that a uh, great sage, Palastya, is the father of all the demons. Um, once upon a time, Parasha began a sacrifice in which all the demons were to be burned to death because his father had been killed and devoured by one of them. So the great sage Vashishta came and he requested Parasha to stop this sacrifice and because he respected him, then Parasha stopped that sacrifice. So Vashishta was there again all over the place. He was born from the breathing of Brahma. So another place that uh, Vashishta is, is there is in the um, Manu, with Manu. When Manu had his first child, Vashishta was one of the priests to make a sacrifice. And he wanted a son, but his wife messed up the sacrifice because she wanted a daughter. And so they got a daughter, Ila. And Manu was not so happy, so he wanted a son. So then Vashishta prayed for Ila to be transformed into a boy. And he became, she became Sudumna. So that's Vashishta was there. Also another son of um, Mahaj, uh, Manu, Vaivasvata Manu, our Manu, is uh, another son was Prishadra, and he was supposed to protect the cows at night. But by mistake, he killed, he killed a cow instead of the lion that was attacking him, because it was dark and he didn't see properly. So in the morning, Vashishta cursed him said, your next life, you will be a Shudra, because you killed a cow. Well, Prabhupada said an interesting thing here. It appears Vashishta was not free from Tamagun, mode of ignorance. As a family priest or spiritual master of Prishadha, Vashishta should have taken Prishadha's offense very lightly. But instead, Vashishta cursed him to become a Shudra. It is the duty of the family priest not to curse the disciple, but to give him relief through the performance of some sort of atonement. Vashishta, however, did just the opposite. Therefore, Vishnu Chakrati Thakur says he was Duramati. His intelligence was not very good. And so again, that's the ninth canto, second chapter. Ninth canto, seventh chapter is another story with uh, uh, Vishishta. Harish Chanda performed, he's a king, he performed a sacrifice, and Vishwamitra was the priest. Uh, Vishwamitra was angry at the king he took away all his possessions, saying, this is my dakshina. So Vashishta didn't like this. So he was fighting with Vishwamitra. And so then uh, one of them cursed the other, may you become a bird. And the other one said, may you become a duck. So they both became birds and they continued fighting for many, many years as a duck and a bird. So even the sages uh, are not so peaceful up there. These things are going on. Uh, another story with um, Vishishta. Uh, he, he also cursed another king, Saudasa, uh, to become a Rakshasa. Um, but after 12 years, he was released uh, from the curse, and, but he still didn't have any children. So then the wife of Saudasa asked uh, Vishishta to have children. Uh, he was arranged to have children for uh, King Sodasa, and she was having a child for so many years but could not give birth. So Shishta struck her abdomen with a stone and a son was born named Ashnaka. In Pamada, another celebrated Rishi, hmm, Trita, one of the three sons of Prajapati Gotam. He was the third son and his other two brothers were known as Ekat and Dita. All the brothers were great sages and strict followers of the principles of religion. By dint of severe penances, they were promoted to Brahmaloka, planet where Brahmaji lives. Once Chitamuni fell into a well. He was an organizing worker of many sacrifices 
and as one of the great sages, he also came to show respect to Bhishmaji at his deathbed. He was one of the seven sages in Varunaloka. He hailed from the western countries of the world. As such, most probably, he belonged to the European countries. At that time, the whole world was under one Vedic culture. So here we have a sage uh, from Europe, um, Jita. Jita is from the European countries, in case you didn't know. I also heard Kashyap. Kashyap is also from, um, and that's where you get the ca Caucasian. You get the name Caucasian from Kashyap. Kashyap. Okay, so I guess we could we could finish, or we should stop. I think I we should stop here. Is somebody else speaking tomorrow? Or? Oh, okay, I'll just keep going. Great Samadha, one of the sages of the heavenly kingdom. He was a close friend of Indra, the king of heaven, and was his greatest Bihaspati. He used to visit the royal assembly of Maharaj Yudhisthira, and he also visited the place where Vishwadev breathed his last. Sometimes they explained the glories of Lord Shiva before Maharaj Yudhisthira. He was the son of Vitihavya, and he resembled in features the body of Indra. Sometimes the enemies of Indra mistook him to be Indra and arrested him. He was a great scholar of the Rig Veda, and thus he was highly respected by the Brahmin community. He lived a life of celibacy and was powerful in every respect. Then Asita. Asita was, there was a king of the same name, but here in the Asita mention is Asita Devala Rishi, a great powerful sage of the time. He explained to his father 1,500,000 verses from Mahabharata. Wow. Okay, yeah, in the heavenly planets, everything is bigger. The Vedas are bigger. I think there's one billion verses of the Vedas, according to Tatva Sundarva. Um, if you go to the heavenly planets, then you can hear all of them. Uh, he was one of the members in the snake sacrifice for Maharaj Jamajaya. He was also present during coronation ceremony of Maharaj Yudhisthira, along with other great rishis. He also gave Maharaj Yudhisthira instructions while he was on the Anjana Hill. He was also one of the devotees of Lord Shiva. So he's in Bhagavad Gita. Um, Arjuna mentions him that all the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Deva, and Vyas confirm this truth that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Kakshivam, one of the sons of Gautamuni and father of the great sage Chandrakoshika. He was one of the members of parliament of Maharaj Yudhisthira. Achi, Achi Muni, was a great Brahmin of sage and one of the mental sons of Brahmaji. Brahmaji is so powerful, simply by thinking of a son you can have it. These sons are known as Manasa Putras. Out of seven Manasa Putras of Brahmaji, out of the seven great Brahmin of sages, Atri was one. In his family, the great Puchetas were also born. Atri Muni had two Chatriya sons who became kings. King Artama is one of them. He is counted as one of the 21 Prajapatis. His wife's name was Anasuya, and he helped Maharaj Pariksha in his great sacrifices. So when Lord Brahma ordered Achi to have children, uh, they went to perform severe austerities. He was standing up on one foot, and he was praying, may the Lord of the universe be pleased to offer me a son exactly like him. And so a blazing fire came out of his head, uh, and all the three deities saw Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So all three went to him, um, along with Gandharva Siddhas, Vidyadharas, Nagas. So they came to the ashram of uh, Atri, and uh, so then Anasuya got all three of them as her sons, expansions of, of um, these three. Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva. Soma was an expansion of Brahma, Dattatreya of Vishnu, and Darasa of Lord Shiva. Mm. Kashika, one of the permanent Rishi members in the Royal Assembly of Maharaj Yudhisthira. He sometimes met Lord Krishna. There are several other sages of the same name. Sudarshan, this wheel, which is accepted <coughs> by the personality of God, Vishnu, or Krishna, as his personal weapon is the most powerful weapon, greater than Brahmastras or similar other disastrous weapons. <clears throat> In some of the Vedic literatures said that Agni Day, the fire god, presented this weapon to Lord Sri Krishna, but factually this weapon is eternally carried by the Lord. Agni Day presented this weapon to Krishna 
in the same way that Rukmini was given by Maharaj Rukma to the Lord. The Lord accepts such presentations from his devotees, even though such presentations are eternally his property. There is an elaborate description of this weapon in Adi Parva of Mahabharata. Lord Shri Krishna used this weapon to kill Shishupala, a rival of the Lord. He also killed Shalva by this weapon, and sometimes he wanted his friend Arjuna to use it to kill his enemies. Mahabharata, Virat Parva, 56, 3. So we hear about this in Ninth Canto, where Maharaj Ambarish was attacked by Gurdasa, and uh, Sudarshan was sent, and he killed the demon that was sent to kill Ambarish, and then he pursued Durvasa, who went to everywhere protection. And even the Ryan could not excuse him, so he had to fold the lotus feet of Ambarish. And Ambarish was very humble, and he felt shy and ashamed because seeing Durvasa at his feet. So then um, Sri Prabhupada says that, this, what is the Sudarshan Chakra? The Sudarshan Chakra is the glance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead by which he creates this material world. So that's the glance, the Sudarshan Chakra. Uh, it's most dear to the Lord, has thousands of spokes, killer of prowess of all other weapons, killer of darkness, and manifester of prowess of devotional service. It's a devotee, Sudarshan's a devotee. Um, means of establishing religious principles, killer of all irreligious activities. Without his mercy, universe cannot be maintained. And so, yes, the Lord is still glancing, and that's Sudarshan. So then Maharaj Ambarish prayed to Sudarshan to be merciful, and Sudarshan refrained from killing Jarvasamuni. So why did all these sages come here? Uh, they wanted to hear Bhishwadev Mahajan speak and see him leave his body for Vaikuntha. They were all, although they were all great sages, they still wanted to hear Bhishma because he was a great Mahajan. So in Nectar of Devotion, Krishna showed his compassion by being present before Bhishma at the time of death. Uh, he, when he was laying in the bed of arrows, then Bhishma was very anxious to see Krishna, and Krishna was speaking with tears in his eyes. Uh, so that's, this is the scene that's going on here now. Krishna is here, the sages are here. They've come to hear from the great Mahajan Vishwadev instructions. So we'll stop here. Is there any questions? You can ask at this point. Is the question super? Question about the gambling match, you know. <laughs> Which gambling match? Oh, the Pandas? Yeah, the dice game, yeah. Yeah. And how, because they challenged him that he was obligated to play, mm. even though he didn't want to play. Right. I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're not a Chatriya. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, in, there were rules. Chachi, there were Chatriya rules. If someone challenged you to gambling or to fighting, then you have to, and if someone asks you to marry them, you have to accept too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, someone asks, if some girl comes and asks a Kshatriya to marry him, he can't refuse. And if some Kshatriya comes and challenges him to fight, he can't refuse. And if, if uh, someone challenges to gambling, he can't refuse. So even though they were devotees, they were um, still following the Varnashram system. Mm -hmm. This is part of the Varnashram. So, yeah, everybody wants to follow Varnasham. Good luck. Um, <laughs> we don't know what all the rules are. <laughs> the rules for Vaishyas, the rules for Grihastas, the rules for Shudra. <laughs> no rules for Shudra, so you can be a Shudra, I guess. But even the Shudras were, were controlled. Uh, they were controlled uh, in, in Varnasham, in the, in the ancient Varnasham system. You know, there's stories in Mahabharata about Shudras, who are elevated people. Yeah, yeah. And they were consulted even by the kings. Um, I, I, I was remembering a story that somehow came to my mind. One king was doing a sacrifice, and he co was consulting, or, or yeah, the brahmanas were consulting the Shudras how to plow the field, because the brahmanas had to plow the field with a golden plow. Um, <laughs> so, 
and the shudras were the ones who were plowing. The vaishas were in charge of the shudras, and the shudras were actually doing the work, plowing the field. Yeah, so there's, yeah, there was, Varnasham was quite different, quite different. There's, there's uh, yeah, we, as Prabhupada, he said on a morning walk in Mayapur, you can't follow, sannyasis can't follow, grihastas can't follow, there was some conflict in, in 1976-75. And Prabhupada said, nobody can follow in this age of Kali. You have to just chant, Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalam. Chant the holy name. You can't follow all these rules. We don't even know what the rules are. <laughs> what to speak of following them. Don't know what these rules are. Yeah. Sudras are uh, glorified uh, in relation to Krishna consciousness because they yeah. have a natural service attitude. Service attitude, right. Yeah, yeah. You remember one part of Yeah, I there remember. is a purpose. Prabhupada so said that Sudras can become devotee yeah. easily than others. I was thinking, like, wow. Yeah, exactly, Sudras. yeah. Because they have a service attitude. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, I didn't realize it until yesterday that somebody else is giving the same class tomorrow. Oh, it's you? Don't worry. <laughs> it'll be wonderful. completely different, I know. You really wonderful. <laughs> it'll be, you'll have all the stories. Find out how did, how did Tukshika get the, the nectar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about that. Okay, any other questions? Jaya, glories to Shri Prabhupada. Yeah.